How's it going everybody, this is Awaits back with another video on the channel. This is going to be a tutorial on Android Studio, especially with Android emulators on Windows. Now, I've been using Intel processor all my life, but recently I built my computer and I got this AMD processor now. And I installed Android Studio and I faced this issue. So when I try creating this new virtual device, this HJXM is not installed. And when I go and install this, it says cannot install because I'm running an AMD processor. Uh, there is a workaround. So if I turn on this feature on Windows, so I'm going to bring up this window here. So you're going to have to make sure that your virtualization is on to be able to create an emulator for Android. Android itself is an operating system, which is like, you know, Android Studio actually create a virtual device for you. So you're going to have to turn on this Windows Hyper Visual Platform. Now, when you turn this thing on, you will be able to create Android emulators on AMD processor. Also, what you need to do is if I go to SDK Manager, I'm going to go to SDK Tools, and here we have Android Emulator, Hypervisual Driver for AMD uh, Processor Installer. So you're going to make sure that you install this. But there's a problem here. The problem is, uh, if I turn that feature on for that Windows, I will not be able to use VirtualBox. There's a lot of errors that I get when I use VirtualBox and that feature is on. Now, I want to be able to, you know, create some Linux distro using VirtualBox because I use a lot of uh, uh, virtual machines to do the development work. For example, I have like a separate virtual machine for Python, separate for Ionic, and separate for Android. So I was unable to actually use VirtualBox alongside uh, with Android Studio Emulator. Now, if you're facing the same issue where on AMD processor, if you turn the Windows feature on to create a virtual uh, devices within Android Studio, then you're not going to be able to use the VirtualBox. It's fine if you're not going to use VirtualBox. I use VirtualBox, and if you want to run Android Emulator and VirtualBox side by side, you cannot do that. Now, there's a workaround. There's a software called BlueStacks. I'm going to go to a website, and here you're going to download BlueStacks. It's free uh, software that runs Android. So what you need to do is download it. I've already downloaded. I'm going to bring it up. So let me just bring up the Android Studio back and also the BlueStack. So when you install BlueStack for the first time, it's going to be in the tablet mode. Also, one feature that you want to turn on, so you can use this as an Android device, which basically will seem like it's connected to your computer, and you can install application directly from Android Studio. So first of all, I'm going to go to Settings, go to Preference, and I want to make sure that I enable Android Debug Bridge. So once you do that, you will be able to see this device in Android Studio. Also, I would like to change the mode. So here we have a tablet mode. I'm going to change this to phone mode. I'm going to click on this 18, uh, 1080p resolution. Click on save, restart now. It's going to restart in phone mode now. Once this is uh, restarting, I'm going to restart Android Studio as well. Sometimes Android Studio will not pick up this device. Uh, and you won't be able to see that here. You can give it a shot by going to the troubleshoot and then click on rescan devices. But if you still don't see this here, then you're gonna have to restart Android Studio. I'm gonna click on rescan devices and it came back with all of these devices, so I'm still not able to see this. Uh, usually it come up if you wait for like a few minutes, but I'm gonna go close Android Studio and I'm going to restart Android Studio. Okay, now if I could see this device here, like Android device. So here we got this Samsung SM59G. So now what I can do is click on this play button and it's going to connect to this and it's going to install this APK. You see this pop up here? So I'm going to say install APK file. Actually not the install APK file. It's actually going to build right now. And you don't have to click on this, but if you want to build APK in drag and drop, you can do that as well. I'll create a separate video how when you work with uh, Capacitor and Ionic, how you can set up the live reload in BlueStacks. So I'm just going to wait for this to finish, then I should be able to see the app running. Okay, so we can see the app is successfully installed. I'm just going to click on it, and it's going to open up this application. There you go. So the app is running in Android Emulator uh, using BlueStacks, and it's going to be fast. I have tested a lot of uh, profiles when, you know, you go to ABD Manager, you create, I've created this profile and given them like 8 gig or 16 gig. They're really slow. Uh, they're still not really good. 
Now I can actually do one more thing here. I can connect uh, via Chrome as well. So if I go here and I'm gonna just bring it side by side. So type Chrome colon slash slash inspect and I should be able to see this device and should be able to uh, see the web view of this. So here you go, we got this SMG9 f and I've got this web view Ionic starter application. So I'm gonna click on this inspect and then I should be able to see the code here. So if I click on, for example, a date picker, I should be able to see that here and I can see all the logs. You really want to be specific saying, I wanna use this particular API. You could do that in Blue Stack as well. Or if you say, I wanna create this profile with this particular API level and SDK level, then you can do that in Blue Stack as well. So I hope this video helped. Hope you liked the video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Cheers.